Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, so today um, we're going to take a look at a Beretta M9. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that doesn't quite look right. You aren't fooled yet, are you? No, that ain't no Beretta M9. This is an old airsoft gun that I dug up out during spring cleaning. I just thought it was kind of funny that I found this thing. You know, this was like my first airsoft gun. And, uh, you know, I just bought the Beretta. Figured I'd do a video on the actual Beretta, but figured I'd take that out. Look at that. Didn't even have the orange tip. Back before orange tips were mandatory for everything. Can you imagine running around your neighborhood with that nowadays? Whew, never know. Anyway, that ain't the Beretta M9. This is the Beretta M9. I just bought this thing. Uh, not too long ago. Very nice little pistol. You know, Beretta has had a pretty poor couple years, you know. Military looking to replace them. They finally have found their uh, replacement in the uh, SIG, well, a variant of the SIG P320. Uh, I believe they're designating that as the M17 currently. That probably could change, but I don't know. You know, the Beretta started its service life in 85. There were some problems, you know, that pesky problem of a couple of the slides just completely blowing up in your face, but, you know, obviously high rounds, and I think the median round count for these, median round life for one of these is like 40, 45,000 rounds. That's a lot of rounds to even get through from a normal shooter's standpoint. I shouldn't say that. Maybe some of you do. I don't know. I don't get out that much. But, you know, that would have been, I think that the original variant was called like the 92SB, then the M9, you know, kind of was a few variations on that. M9A1 had the Picatinny rail, the uh, M9A3, which just recently came out, you know, had some of the back strap options, a lot thinner grip profile, which was very nice. But, you know, this was a pistol that took over the spot of the, the iconic 1911. Too much, many people's disdain, because, uh, you know, a lot of people love that, including me. But this was such a unique uh, firearm, especially if you grew up in the 80s and 90s. You saw this gun in so many action movies, right? Um, but very interesting design. See that open barrel, you know, funky, funky looking design there. <laughs> you know, just very iconic looking. You know, if you ever watched any any action movies from the 90s, you saw this pistol nine times out of ten. It was very widely used because um, that connection with the military. And it was carried as well by, you know, police officers and, and so on and so forth. So, mechanically, these things are fantastic. It's, it's as smooth as butter. Everything works the way it should. And the package comes with uh, two 15-round magazines. You know, the... M9A3, the new one, I believe comes standard with 17 round mags. You know, 15 rounds, you know, my Glock 19 carries 15 rounds, so that's one gripe for most people, but a lot of it's in the weight. You know, we're talking like 34, 35 ounces unloaded, and then when you're talking about full 15 rounds of holler points like I got here, you're dealing with a pretty heavy package. You know, it's not something you're going to conceal carry, although I'm sure some of you could, um, or you know, be your duty pistol. There's a lot lighter options that still offer very nice controllability. But you know, aside from that, this thing is built extremely well. Uh, does have the decocker, which is ambidextrous. Uh, also acts as a safety. Your trigger is disengaged. You can work your slide. But you can, it will not recock the hammer while, that's, uh, while the hammer drops down. Click it back up there. You're in double action. And you can engage. And then, obviously, you'd cycle around in real life. Reset into single action. And keep plinking away until you're done. Trigger-wise, you know, the double action pull's not bad. It's a little heavy, but it's not horrible. It doesn't stack. It's pretty smooth all the way through. The single action is nice. Nice and crisp. Reset is not bad. The trigger is a bit spongy, especially in single action. There's a lot of give here, which I don't particularly like. Um, but, you know, it, it's service. It, it's a decent trigger. And I believe these are still, yeah, these are polymer triggers. 
old Yankee Marshall, if you've ever watched any of his Beretta videos, you know that's the first thing he normally um, replaces. Uh, breakdown wise, you got this little button here. You depress that button, come over to your other side and pull down the lever. Everything springs forward. Little different design than what you're typically used to seeing nowadays in the frame. And and as so on the slide, there's well that's not that's not anything super unique anymore. The barrel though is where we get a little bit funky. Little funky. Not too funky, just different. It's just a different design. But everything works pretty good. And I believe these are designated as a four 4.9 inch barrel, I think. I don't think it's a full 5 inch barrel. But, uh, you know, still very nice mechanically. This thing really, you know, goes together like butter and, uh, you know, continues on your way. Sight wise, pretty. Uh, Eh, rudimentary sights. I wouldn't call them very good, but they, they're not bad to acquire. And, uh, you know, I mean, they, they work. They're decent. You know, the front sight's fixed. Uh, you know, the rear sight, you know, you're adjustable for windage. Um, but they're, you know, they're just pretty basic sights. The grip angle is not too bad, but it does have a little bit of a hump in the back there, which some people don't like. Again, the M9A3 kind of slimmed down that grip and integrated back straps so that, you know, for people who really did want a bigger grip, they could have it. But it's not super uncomfortable. It's just a little fat in your hands, especially if you have smaller hands. You might not like it as, as much, but it, it really doesn't feel uh, too bad. Fit, it, fit and finish is good. You know, everything about it is, is pretty good, but, you know, I'll tell you my analogy that I came up with for the Beretta M9. Say you have a friend, and you got the big game coming on, and your friend says, hey, come over to my house. I've got a big screen TV, watch game, have a good time. You say, great, that's awesome. So you go over to his house, you go in the living room, you're ready, you're excited, and then all of a sudden you see the TV, and it's big all right. Big and about 500 pounds. You know, like one of those, those 90s, early 2000s big screen TVs, you know, building cabinets, entertainment centers, and so forth. They're big, they work, they last for a long time, probably in a lot of people's basements still just waiting for them to, I don't know, disappear. But, you know, they're a little outdated, obviously, with the invention of the flat screen. This is a little outdated, and I don't want to insult people, but it is. You know, when we compare it to a lot of the polymer guns, and I'm not a polymer fanboy, but, you know, you're talking a lot of weight reduction, and still able to handle the recoil. Now this thing to shoot is fantastic. I mean, it, you know, there, there's minimal recoil. It's right on target. It feels good to shoot. It's very fun to shoot. But you're just, you know, you're adding a lot more weight, and it's it's just a little bit out of date in comparison to to a lot of things we have nowadays. A lot of firearms are in the market, and the bread has just slipped behind a little. But I still had to have one, you know, like I said, <laughs> you know, back back when I had this plinking around on the on the land and firing the little plastic pellets all over the grass and you know hitting the trees and everything. That was what I had when I was younger. That's what I remember. And so I had to have one of these, you know, just to see what it was like. Um, and I and I'm happy with it. It is very fun. It's just a little outdated, like in comparison to everything else that's out today. But yeah, I mean, that was the Bread M9. I wanted to bring that to you real quick, you know, just show it off a little bit. It's a nice little gun. If you all have the opportunity to play around with one, I encourage you to do so. Still a lot of life left in those, and they're not leaving the military right now. They'll still continue to serve a little bit until SIG really gets the contract rolling, so, and then maybe we'll get some surplus. That'd be great. <laughs> so. We'll see. They'll probably get thrown in a silo somewhere in North Dakota just with all the old 1911s and M1 Garands that we can't have because I don't know why. But anyway, folks, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. 
Uh, please, if, if you have, if you're new to the channel, take a look at the other videos I have. I have at this point, I don't know, 70, 80 videos, something like that. Uh, a lot of stuff, including MREs and firearms. So uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate all the subscribers. We've been getting new ones daily. We're we're continuing to grow. So I, you know, I definitely appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. Uh, hitting the like button, leaving your comments. Got a lot of really good comments going on. Got a lot of people that I recognize now. Every video, you know, a, a couple of couple of folks that are that are really uh, engaged into the uh, the Dave's 45 Auto community, <laughs> so to speak, which I which I think is cool. So uh, thank you very much for stopping by. Hope you appreciate the videos as much as I enjoy watch or uh, making them. I don't sit there and watch them. Uh, sorry, I'm not that cool. But anyway, uh, just thank you for continuing to watch, and uh, you'll have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.